Well, welcome to Age Friendly, and of course, here we are on Rogers TV, and it's a new year, so a happy new year to all of our viewers, and hopefully you will enjoy the programs that we're going to bring you about seniors or older adults, however you wish to refer to yourself, because it's it depends what you're doing and talking to and all the rest of it. And about aging, it, it does happen to all of us, whether we like it or not, and uh, what you get out with doing old, as, as you're an older adult, uh, the, some of the decisions you want to make as to what you do. And so tonight and today, our program guest is Nancy Angus. Many people will remember Nancy, of course, working with the city of Thunder Bay many years ago. Nancy, you had a huge, um, uh, you know, client and, and, and people that you worked with, and they remember you very fondly, by the oh, way, so you. I'll give you that compliment. You. But you have many titles, and but today you're going to be talking about uh, age uh, big. And one of the things that's really important, when I did we chatted before the program. Did you? We I went on your website to find out a lot of things that you're doing. Yep. And it is aging, aging big, and that you don't stop because you're getting older. No, and they always say, you know, okay, Rebecca, I'm four foot ten inches right. tall. Yeah. Um, but I always thought that you have to look big. Sure. Like so, you know, it's really so to me. Aging, people say, oh, you get smaller, your world gets a bit smaller. It's true. Like, mm -hmm. you know, physically we shrink, but at the same time, we need to kind of push ourselves out there. And so our acronym for Age Big is Bold, Inquisitive, and Grateful Aging. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to inspire people to find things that kind of um, make them reach out there to connect with people and to activities. There's, there's an old um, image that, that shows a grandmother sitting in a rocking chair in front of a fire, like a fireplace, so to speak, and just sitting there rocking. That was the old age of the older adult uh, many years ago, maybe even decades ago. Now we have older adults, uh, seniors that are that are active, that are, that are wanting to be, but we still have those that are, really don't do anything. They're isolated. They choose not to or they can't or whatever that's. How do we get them involved? Well, Right now, yes. people watching this program yes. is one of the best things, and I heard that this is, um, you know, one of the first aging programs in Canada. So right. I applaud you for that, Rebecca, and for Age Friendly to do that. Um, but you know. Everybody who's watching the program today, mm -hmm. while you're sitting there watching, you can be doing some activity. That's so right. you could be doing a little bit of just moving your arms. So you can sit, everybody that's sitting at home, I run a program called Ageless Grace, which is a fitness program. And uh, we do kind of silly things like this off from seated positions. Mm -hmm. And they're really important uh, for just keeping us moving in some way. So we don't have to sign up for a class. Mm -hmm. You can just do these little bits of movement. But all the things of getting people that find it more challenging to get out of their home, the television programs, things that you might be able to connect with um, on a, a computer is really valuable because you can still build a community um, with your neighbors, right. you know, in your home or in your apartment building or around you. As human beings, uh, Nancy, uh, part of our, what we, who we are is, is communicating with other people. You, you're not meant to just sit by yourself. That's not who we are as a species. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to make sure that people have opportunities to do that. If you choose to sit at home, that's your choice, but that's not really healthy at all. Um, I think it's important you sit at home for a while, but then you try to, this is a new year. Yes. So this is an opportunity to create some new routines for yourself. And one of the things I think is so important in Thunder Bay is that when you line up in a grocery store, if you can chat to the person beside you in the grocery store, um, it's really important because if you live alone, you recognize that perhaps that one person you're talking to in the grocery store, that might be the only person they talk to right. that day. In a day. So, you know, we make huge efforts, some of us, to get out of our homes. We're not naturally, you know, gregarious or, um, you know, we're not extroverts, but by just finding one person to have a little chat with. Yeah. Um, I love it in the, you know, in the community, um, our coffee shops, how people, you know, a lot of people are there on their phones, but there's a lot of people who don't have a telephone and they still just start chatting with somebody that's else right. at the next table. And that's so encouraging to me to see the fact that that's a way that you can connect with people. One of the things that are happening, uh, many of the stores are having self checkouts. Mm -hmm. They're going to revert back because it has been proven now because of that wanting to, 
have interaction with with a with a with a somebody that's checking you out or whatever else. People want that, mm -hmm. and so they're going back to. We're having, going to have people that will actually chat with you as you're checking out of the store. You've heard of the slow food movement where people right. take their time and eat, but there's also a slow lines movement. Right. And in Vancouver, they have actual lineups where people particularly choose mm -hmm. to go in the slow lineup so that the cashier feels good talking to the client or the customer. Yeah. And um, I think, again, in our huge, very fast, very techni technologically you know, based world, mm -hmm. let's put the phones down for a minute. And again, I'm talking about people our age, Rebecca, right. yeah. who are also really focused on their computer screen. Uh, put that down, start talking to other people, start talking to people you haven't talked to before. Pick up the telephone mm -hmm. and call someone who's maybe on their, alone right. in their home right. and have a conversation over the phone. In the UK, of course, we've heard that story about the Minister of Loneliness. Um, their government has actually kind of created an opportunity for people um, to look at this social impact of being alone or lonely, um, and they've tried to create opportunities for people to um, connect and encourage. It's almost like, you know, in high school, they had that thing where the kids have to do volunteer work yes. in order to graduate. Well, I think it's almost like we have to kind of think about that in our later life, <laughs> is that in order to graduate and be a really good, big senior, um, we need to think about what can we do to reach out and connect with other people. Right. One of the things that's really important too, Nancy, is that as an older adult, you can't or you shouldn't just have people your own age. You need to look at, at when we, one of the things that we were going to talk about was mentoring. Who, who are you mentoring? Who are you associating with? And young people are really important in a person's life. In my job, when I first started in the field of, of older adult recreation um, was in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And I was mentored by some of the fabulous women that I met, and men too, but uh, particularly I'm thinking of a one woman who was chair of the Toronto Mayor's Committee on Aging, right. Ivy St. Lawrence. She was a huge mentor to me. But I look now at the work I do with Age Big and the wonderful young people mm -hmm. that uh, Cassandra Fernandez, Melissa Defoe, Nicole Lee, Alexandra um, uh, McKenzie. These are young women who are just starting their careers, but they want to work with seasoned people right. like us. Yes. And I inspire that and in, encourage that. And I think we really need to create um, mentorship opportunities for young people who want to work with those of us who are getting a little bit older. And there's opportunity there, Rebecca. That's right. That's right. And, and, and people our age, Nancy, have the experience which we can pass along. I, I think it's so important. Just be just because you're older doesn't mean to say you're all of a sudden you can't do anything or whatever else. Mm -hmm. It's really important to pass on what you know and you do that with young people. And what's really cool is like some people will phone like or mm -hmm. ask an adv uh, and I know Rebecca you get that people a lot of people asking you for some suggestions or some advice. Right. But also you know um, we all have we all appreciate that. Definitely. It's one of the best things when you retire and you know, you're kind of reworking your life and you're thinking, okay, I, I was good at my job and now I've got this new job of being retired and you know, do I have anything to share? And yes, we do have things to share, so ask us. And, and, and you should do that. If you, we should do that. And it's also important to, to think about young people who think differently than we do. They're mm -hmm. not going to go down the same path we and are. And that's good. So, and that's just fine. Mm -hmm. It's changed, but it's exciting to me, part, be part of that. I agree. That's right. Well, we're going to close this segment, and we're going to come back in and talk with Nancy Angus again about storytelling. So stay tuned. Well, welcome back to Age Friendly, and we're talking with Nancy Angus, who has many titles in our community. I, I hope you don't mind me saying that, Nancy. But we're talking about the fact of Age Big, and of course, it's really an important group that you're leading and, and working with. I appreciate that, because it's really helpful for older adults. So thank you for all the work you do in that. It's been my passion project. Uh -huh. It's been inspired by my mother, Sis Angus, right. um, who you know and well. Yes. Um, and she was always all about um, connecting with people and making new friendships and new opportunities and so I've just kind of taken that little mantle with H Big and we've just started put it out there and started getting people to connect right. in some and, way. And, and really just to, to identify that, that the uh, Age Big came out of the Giant, Giants program yes, that you had it did. before yes. which was really good Yes, and sure. it was storytelling. 
We focused Great. on digital storytelling, which mm -hmm. is three minutes of people, 300 words that people put together. And um, with some of the fabulous young people I work with, we've been able to kind of create those stories as lasting legacies of, of, um, of, of projects that have meant something to people. And the last one that we did um, was with the Thunder Bay Museum. We had um, a, a project where we brought together a group of eight older adults that created stories about places mm -hmm. and places in Thunder Bay or elsewhere that meant something to them. But and it was quite a fascinating um, it's quite a fascinating topic. You know, when you just think about your coffee shop or right. um, somewhere else in town that really means something to you, other than your home, other than, you know, maybe uh, where you worked. But there's all those other third places, they call them. Can you give so me a couple of examples of what people yes, came up with? Yes, I can. And we'll show you one a yes. video that, mm -hmm. one person's, that one person made. Um, parks, Vickers Park, you know, a bit particular bench that you really like to go at. Marina Park, a certain part of Marina Park that you love to go to. Um, perhaps your church and you're involved in your church or you're involved in the kitchen or you know, you, there's things that are a place mm -hmm. that you really feel connected to in the community. And it can be just for you mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that same thing to someone else, but to you it's one of the places that you love to go to. So then an individual, and you had eight? We had eight, eight. people. Mm -hmm. So each of those individuals then spoke for about three minutes yeah. about what that site or place meant to them. Yeah, they wrote a script. Okay. And um, we had a team of volunteers that worked with people to kind of help them shape the script. So that, and then they read it into mm -hmm. a, you know, we recorded it. And then we dropped in, the, the person dropped in some pictures and we created these fabulous stories that are available to people for um, showing in a classroom. They've been shown at conferences across Canada. Mm -hmm. They've been shown, oh, they've been shown outside of Canada as well. Um, but they're used at the university. They're archived at the university. Um, they're, we hope that they get shown in classrooms like high schools and just get people starting to talk about what topics come up when they watch one of the videos. Well, let's watch one of those videos right now. Yeah. So we're going to uh, have the video on about Lloyd's story and we'll come out of that and, and uh, talk a little bit about it, Nancy. Right Thank on. you. One simple question from my then young daughter. How did you end up in Thunder Bay? Well, it was a journey that started a few generations ago. Your great-great-grandfather started it by seeking a future that would bring hope and opportunity in the land of Gold Mountain. Future in a new land was not without its challenges, but adaptability is within everyone that makes their new surroundings. With the language barrier and very little skills, it was necessary to make their place, meet the needs of the community by simply providing food. Thunder Bay prior to 1969 was two distinctive towns, Port Arthur and Fort William. There were three Port Arthurs, one in Texas, China and Canada. So why Canada? Maybe because there was one in China. Great great grandfather brought great grandfather which eventually brought my father who along with other relatives established their own cafe in the early 50s. In time, grandfather was presented with a unique opportunity to look after the canteen at the Fort William Curling Club on the Fort William side of Thunder Bay. That concept was a test, incorporating a traditional established sport of curling and of all things, Chinese Canadian food. The marriage between our family and curling was an ideal union. Both our families grew. The circle always got larger. We were able to continue through assistance of our relatives. The Forium Curling Club was family. I managed to see generations of family grow from kids to adults and was so appreciative of having been involved. Just as I share this story with you, I hope you will continue to build and share our origin story. Ask so we can listen. Listen so we can learn. Learn so we can tell. Tell so we can know.
Well, let's hope, Nancy, that people enjoyed watching that. Now, tell me a little bit about Lloyd's story, because I don't know a whole bunch about it. Oh, Lloyd um, is um, a person that, um, when we talked about, Lloyd's story was talking about the origin of coming to um, mm -hmm. Fort William. Okay. And um, where he came was um, um, uh, uh, to the Fort William Curling Club. That's where his his father was working, he was working, and he talked about raising his family along with all the people who came together right. in, the, um, uh, in the curling club. So it became this community of support ah, and network. So, yes. and you know, a lot of people, my, my husband's dad um, played crib at the Fort William Curling Club. Mm -hmm. You know, after the days when he couldn't curl anymore, he would still go there and play cards. Um, and you know, those are the kinds of places. Some people don't curl, but no. they love the Chinese food. Right. So they'll go and that, that food has constantly brought people together. So that's the place. And that's the really cool thing about the curling club is it's, it's there as an opportunity for a sport, but it's, it's really a way of bringing families together. Mm -hmm. And Lloyd talks about his family growing up through there and coming from China to Canada Where he is and then, now. you know, and, and still feeling that he's immersed in his community um, and through his, his father's work at the So at the this is one time. individual story, but there's seven more. Yes, and yes. And that's exciting to yes, me. Yes. And they're all different locations in the city. Yes, and a lot of people were inspired through the pandemic. Yeah. And one person's story in particular, Helen's, was uh, going to see her daughter in Saskatchewan. So getting used to the drive yes. in her car. So her place was her car. Because well, cool that, that is, you know, that yeah. was taking her to her family uh, when she wasn't able to fly during the pandemic mm -hmm. and how she appreciated the hotels she stayed in, the parks that she saw along the way where she could let her dog out right. so he could do his little bit of running around. So it was pretty cool. It's, it's amazing now, and, and people can watch these on, on, the, on the website and yes. all the rest of it? Okay. Yes, on That's the Thunder Bay Museum's website. Right. We'll put the site up there for people to see. It's called Places and Faces. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and also, hopefully, will it be up on uh, Age Big's site as well. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you for that. We're going to have Nancy back for our next segment and talking about aging in place. Nancy Angus, my guest. Well, here we are back with Age Friendly, and we're talking with Nancy Angus. And Nancy, how do you age at home? Anywhere. We can age anywhere okay. at home. And you know, the thing is, too, Rebecca, as soon as we're born, we start aging, right? That's correct. <laughs> so, Like uh, it or not, we do. We do. And um, I think that there's a huge movement these days mm -hmm. for people who really, and we're seeing it in Thunder Bay more and more, right. is people want to stay in their home. Correct. Uh, but... We have to be realistic, Rebecca, and you and I are both realistic. Mm -hmm. We know that when we get a little bit older, there are inevitably changes physically with us. Um, you know, our, our senses might change a little bit too. So we want to be safe in our homes and we want to be able to do things in our homes and stay there and be as comfortable and connected as, as possible. Yeah. yeah, And it, but it means we have to do some work. To make at, that happen. We do, and so it doesn't just magically happen. And what ha you know, and you can talk to anyone who works in a healthcare setting, and they'll say what will happen is there'll be a crisis, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you have to do all your whatever. Yes, and it costs money, and it's just mm -hmm. it's frustrating and it's stressful. So let's. I think this is a movement that Age Big is on, where we want to let's realize that when we get older, we want to make some change. So perhaps it means moving to an apartment, mm -hmm. looking for a great place that you want to be in. But if you want to stay in your house, I want to, I'd want i like to stay in our house. Great. But I, I realize I have a bathroom on the main floor, which is important to me because yes. our bathrooms and making a, a network from, from yep. our bedroom to our bathroom is extremely important. Um, I have a kitchen that is, um, you know, has enough storage for me, but I also have, I've <laughs> invested in a couple of those things that I can reach how do things I get off up the there? top. No, yeah. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, how do I get up there mm -hmm. safely? Yeah. Um, or do I just need to eliminate some stuff from those top Thank cabinets? Yes. I don't need all those. I don't need the air fryer no, and all that no. stuff. It's like, although the air fryer I really <laughs> like. So maybe that's one utensil sure. I'll keep. Yeah. Um, so we have to look at um, 
those are fun things, like, you know, just thinking about that. Our bedroom as well, do what, you know, our layer, our bed, and the technology now is phenomenal, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, there's this huge aging in place technology movement where um, the technicians, the researchers are all helping us by researching what's going to help us in our homes, and they're asking us. So it's nothing about us without us. Right. They're asking us, what do you need to stay in your home? What tech advancement can help you? Um, so I'm seeing phenomenal things going on there that are safety options, like, for example, on your uh, stove where there's, there's um, um, sometimes people have found that they've left their stove on, so there's there's knobs and things that can, can, you can give you alerts. Yeah. But um, maybe you need to invest some money in doing something in your home. Like, so for example, um, you know, the, the grab bar in your bathroom, right. it doesn't have to look institutional. No. I think it's important to keep your house beautiful. Of course. And, um, you know, so, so often um, people will say, oh, you know, all these things, it's gonna cost me money, it's gonna be frustrating, but just think, maybe it's not for you, but it's for a guest that comes to visit you. Right. You know, right. eventually it might be for you, <laughs> but yeah. let's try to be nice to the people who come to see us. So. And, and you can make it so that it's, and it doesn't have to be really costly. No. A lot of, a lot of, some older adults don't have a lot of money, no. but at the same point in time, to stay in your own home, which is the best, and right. also provincial government are pushing that. They want be, it's the cheapest way to look after older mm -hmm. adults is mm -hmm. to stay in their home. Within that context, though, it has to be safe yeah it really has to be safe mm -hmm. and how can you manage and how do you get around it all the rest so there's things that can be done yeah. at very little cost when you really think about it and one of the things that we've you know we kind of developed through age big and through the giants project way back with age friendly was um a team of eight mm -hmm. and you know a lot of us got really comfortable with those teams during the pandemic right good things came out of the pandemic yeah so let's keep those good things so your team of eight is not just somebody to come and fix your toilet or fix your runny tap but it's also the person that you like to call down the street just to say hi how they're doing um, it's somebody else who can um, uh, shovel your snow for you or something or it's um, a ride to church yeah so those kinds of things that are really important but we have to really work. And yes, a circle of eight is really lovely to have, but that's a lot of people on your team. So maybe think, I'll start with a circle of four. Sure. And again, yeah. here we are in January. Let's call those people, say, do you want to be on my circle of four, mm -hmm. my team, you know, so I can feel comfortable staying in my house because the safety aspect is so important for us. One of the things, Nancy, is, is uh, you haven't mentioned family a whole bunch. And not all of us have family. We so, have friends of family. And, and, and that's okay. So when you're talking about how you get assistance and things like that, it can be that circle that you're talking about. And that's not necessarily family. It's your circle of friends that you continue. And it can be young people too. It doesn't have to be somebody your own age. No, it's so important. And I think it's really valuable for young people to recognize too, that they need to have those circles. That's right. And they need to incorporate people of all ages. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people say, I, I don't have grandparents. And I'd really yes. like to have somebody to help learn. Yes. Oh, you know, this is the kind of a funny <laughs> one, but I'd really like to help somebody with their iPad. You know, so, but that that's senior right. might be able to help the younger person. So, but. I, I agree. And, and, you know, family is wonderful if you're lucky enough to have the support. Mm -hmm, uh, but mm -hmm. sometimes even family could be busy. Yes. So we really have to work at it. It's more of that work that we're doing, Rebecca, and on it, the and age. It, and it gets you out of the isolation component of it. We know that there's so many people that literally go nowhere and they're, they're staying in their apartments or in their homes. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is sad. Because mm -hmm. you have something to offer the rest of society in and some And that's way. one of the really the challenging things, too, when we talk about aging in place, is that sometimes people, because they're spending so much money keeping their house going, that they can't afford to maybe get the, the U-ride or um, mm -hmm. a taxi to go somewhere, or it's impossible for them to get the, the transit. So let's think about um, uh, making an effort to budget for some of those things that right. you do go somewhere. You yes. go to your card group, you go to the 55 Plus Center, you go to um, Roots Community Food Center for the fabulous lunch that they have. You know, So those are the kinds of things that you have a destination mm -hmm. and you make a budgetary choice to get there. That's right. And that's not easy because a lot of people don't have the money. But let's try to think about what can I do 
Could, if I it, want to get it, there's ways to do that. There's there no question ways. about that. Yeah. Nancy, this has been really educational and fun. And I, on behalf of our community, wanted to say thank you very much for what you do for Age Big and for so many seniors in our community. Thank you very much. When I talk about mentors, you're one of mine. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Now, we want to make sure as we end, you keep a brain going and you keep your mind going and all the rest of it, but it's really important that you keep your body going. And Linda DePiro, who is going to bring you the one moment with senior exercise very shortly, uh, will keep you uh, moving. As you've identified, Nancy, at the start, you got to keep these these hands and everything moving keep so your feet moving really really and really we'll work important. your smile muscles thank you that's very good <laughs> thanks very much really enjoyed the conversation today thanks Rebecca hi I'm Linda DePiro and today I'm going to teach you some techniques of body tapping we're going to start by finding our navel and we're going to go high to the right and low to the left I'm using my fingers they're pretty strong as I kind of stimulate around this area. Why we are going right to left is that's the way our digestive system works. From here, I'm going to use fists and pound the pelvis a little bit here, all the way around. And from there, the quads are pretty strong, so you can still use fists or you can use your fingertips coming down to the shin. Now, I prefer bare feet because you can tap your feet better. And I also like the idea of grounding with bare feet rather than shoes. Going down the inner thigh, I'm still using my fists, always tap the toes. So, fascia, it requires movement, hydration and body tapping. So this stimulates our, I'm going down the outside, soft skeleton and connective tissue, deep and also superficial, coming up. You can compare your lower body to your upper body. Wow. And then continue. Soft tapping through the rib cage, right? Along the collarbone, the back of the head, coming up, branching out. We will hit certain meridian areas that are very sensitive, like the ears and the armpit. Okay? So I'm just going to do one arm. You can do the other one after. Tap on top. You can either pound gently or tap. So meridian, like acupuncture points, it's been around for centuries. It has been proven to improve health and well-being. It can boost energy levels, better sleep, reducing stress, anxiety, strengthens the immune system. So keep on tapping and add this to your daily morning regime and before you retire at night.